You may, may not, uh, you may not find out in uh, a month, a year, five years or ten years, but you'll look back at what I'm telling you now, and you'll say to yourself, "My gosh, the son of a gun was right." After a slew of frightening UFO sightings in the 1940s and 50s, the public was left in a state of uncertainty over the existence of aliens. This is when many governments stepped in and successfully convinced the populace that the over 800 sightings of UFOs were baseless. Soon, more people believed that aliens were mere figments of an overactive imagination. Luckily, just as the world began to believe these official reports, an unlikely expert did an investigation that no one else could pull off. John Lear, a record-setting aviator and cargo pilot for the CIA during the Vietnam War, conducted a mind-blowing investigation into the reported sightings. What secrets did John Lear uncover in his research into this colossal cover-up? Why is the government investing so heavily in burying these alien sightings? Join us in this video as we dive into research the government doesn't want you, you to know about. We'll also explore how aliens are already here, and they're not our friends, according to John Lear. The first well-known and documented sighting of a UFO was in 1947. That summer, Hundreds of Americans reported seeing unidentified flying objects in the skies of their locality. There were over 800 reports of these sightings of flying disks, but the government referred to them as copycat reports. The most reliable source was civilian pilot and businessman Kenneth Arnold. He claimed to have witnessed a disk-shaped object while flying his small plane to Yakima, Washington. Arnold saw a bright flashing light similar to sunlight reflecting from a mirror at an altitude of over 9,000 feet. This bright light turned out to be a string of nine shiny UFOs flying at speeds of 1,200 miles an hour. Arnold described these spacecraft as saucers skipping on water, which led to an official investigation by the U.S. Air Force in 1948. This investigation into the extraterrestrial hypothesis was called Project Sign. The researchers on this committee believed that the UFOs were sophisticated Soviet aircraft sent into U.S. airspace. Project Sign was succeeded by Project Grudge, which was later succeeded by Project Blue Book in 1952. The conclusion of these inquiries stated that there was insufficient information to confirm the existence of otherworldly spacecraft. Former CIA pilot John Lear would soon dispel these claims. Lear was familiar with the aerospace industry as he had started flying at the age of 14. His first solo flight was in 1960, at the age of 16. After this, he was hired as a pilot in his father's company. His father, Bill Lear, was an American inventor and business magnate who owned over 140 patents for audio tape systems, battery eliminators, and other technological inventions. Unfortunately, John and his father were estranged, which excluded him from his father's will. In 1966, Lear and a crewmate flew a record-breaking flight around the world by covering 22,000 miles in 50 hours and 39 minutes. Lear also flew planes for the CIA for 16 years before running for the Nevada State Senate in 1980. Also in the 80s, Lear and his friends became interested in secret planes and objects, sometimes staking obscure bases in the Nevada desert. In December 1987, Lear posted a statement to a bulletin board dedicated to paranormal activities, claiming that the U.S. government had close contact with extraterrestrials. This claim got a lot of media attention, as he claimed that the government was secretly promoting alien movies like 1977's Close Encounters of the Third Kind and 1982's Extraterrestrial, E.E.T. He claimed that these movies were designed to prepare the public on the existence of aliens. The script for E.T. was written in less than two months by Steven Spielberg and Melissa Matheson, and the movie surpassed Star Wars upon release. The blockbuster held the record for the highest grossing film of all time for 11 years. Close Encounters was also written and directed by Steven Spielberg, 
grossing over $300 million worldwide. It was deemed culturally, historically, and aesthetically significant by the United States Library of Congress. In 1988, Leah revised the document he posted in 1987. The updated document described a secret government committee, Majestic 12, as making a treaty with gray aliens. Lear's investigation revealed that there had been a UFO cover-up for 40 years, and Germany may have recovered a flying saucer in 1939. There were other reports of the Swedish government investigating ghost rockets. Lear revealed that many individuals who were involved in the original investigation died by suicide. Most notable of them was the first U.S. Secretary of Defense, James Forrestal. Forrestal's mental health deteriorated, and he died after falling out of a 16th floor window. Many, including Lear, found this turn of events highly questionable. Lear's investigation revealed that U.S. President Harry Truman created a secret group of scientists, military leaders, and government officials to facilitate the investigation and recovery of alien spacecraft. The investigation revealed leaked government documents that spoke about an alien crash in 1947. The group was tasked with engaging and recovering alien technology that could be exploited for our use. The eight-page government document revealed other important memos and declassified documents written by President Eisenhower's assistant to General Nathan Twining. The FBI has, however, declared that these claims were completely bogus and made up, but Lear was convinced beyond belief as his investigation showed more interesting details. Lear's documents also revealed three saucer crashes, one in Roswell, another near Aztec, New Mexico, and a third in Laredo, Texas. He stated that the government covered a total thorough sweep of the crash. Lear spoke of government-sanctioned alien abductions, alien implants, and alien-human hybrids. But the government described these incidents as a hoax. In 1989, Lear and a group of researchers went to the outskirts of Area 51 and spent weeks observing the facility. He watched a glowing disk rise above the mountains over Papoose Lake every Wednesday like clockwork. On March 29, 1989, Lear and his friends recorded a video of this object from a facility that was reported not to exist. This sighting was corroborated by Bob Lazar and another scientist who spoke on live television. One of the locations for these alien experiments includes the Dolce Base. The Dolce Base is a jointly operated human and alien underground facility in Dulce, New Mexico. Discovered by Albuquerque businessman Paul Benowitz, the Dolce base is said to be populated by gray aliens and humans. John Lear stated that he had independent confirmations of the base's existence. Other residents of Dulce have spoken about seeing UFOs, strange moving lights, and other unexplained sightings in the area. Lear stated that other incidents ascribed to the alien presence were cattle mutilations and altercations between aliens and the U.S. military. This altercation was said to have claimed 66 human lives, which led Lear to believe that aliens could not be trusted. In a live television interview, Lear claimed that there were about 70 secretly known species of aliens, some with good intentions and others with nefarious intentions. He stated that some had humanoid features, while others were unlike anything imaginable to man. He stated that the physical features of aliens made it hard for them to survive in our atmosphere, hence the need for special bases and facilities to study them. He stated that the first official communication between the U.S. government and aliens was in 1964. Three saucers landed at a secret location by prearranged agreement and were filmed by five high-speed cameras. This interview made the mysterious area 51 notorious and synonymous with the UFOs. The U.S. military caught and profiled an amateur astronomer, Chuck Clark, when he discovered a buried surveillance network surrounding the base. These claims were further confirmed when Robert Lazar granted an interview claiming to have worked in a subsidiary of the Area 51 complex. He claimed to have worked on multiple projects, 
including re-engineering alien aircraft. He stated that the alien capabilities were beyond human comprehension and were jaw-dropping in manifestation. Further research to substantiate the existence of Robert Lazar proved abortive, as the facilities claimed that there was no record of him. However, a 1982 phone book from the KLAS lab lists Lazar as one of the scientists and technicians in the facility. Known species of aliens include the Flatwoods monsters, which are tall humanoid beings with spade-shaped heads. There are the greys, which are the most popular species, with grey skins. These hairless beings have black almond-shaped eyes, nostrils, and forefingers, including a thumb. There are the little green men and other reptilian-looking beings. While there have been photos and video recordings of some alien beings, they have not been allowed to circulate in the media. Lear's research showed that humans have continued to perform experiments on these humanoid beings to understand their biology. While scientists are working hard in laboratories to find cures for human diseases, others are in secret facilities hoping to find these cures in alien biology. A wide range of genetic experimentation is ongoing with the hopes of understanding their home planets. While many people have a misconception of aliens as coming in peace, Lear stated that not all aliens have such noble intentions. He claimed that they came to Earth to carry out genetic experiments on humans to understand how we operate. He believes that many alien civilizations are light years ahead of humans and are not biologically limited by human limitations. Lear's research further revealed that in one of the space crashes, three aliens were recovered alive and kept in an electromagnetic facility for observation. The need for the electromagnetic facility is due to the alien ability to move by thought and disappear at will. The electromagnetic facility keeps them from moving at the heights of their abilities and causing harm to their human captors. Many have wondered why an intelligent alien species would allow themselves to be captured indefinitely by humans. Many experts believe that the aliens were at the mercy of humans as they cannot survive in our atmosphere and were rescued in time. Others believe that there is a pact between humans and aliens to share knowledge for human advancement. It could also be that the aliens are intentionally letting themselves be captured so as to understand humans and our ways. Lear's report stated that some of the aliens have similar digestive systems to humans, while others take in nutrients through their skins and release waste through the same process. This makes them highly dependent on humans, as there are no details on the nutritional needs of alien species. One of the most curious things about UFO sightings is the fact that they have mostly been reported around nuclear facilities or locations for nuclear tests. This has been of interest to high-ranking former U.S. defense and intelligence officials, academics, and aerospace industry experts, including the founder of the Center for Students of Extraterrestrial Intelligence, Dr. Stephen Greer. Dr. Stephen stated that the first atomic bomb was the event that attracted these advanced beings to Earth. He claims that aliens started frequenting Earth more due to concerns that humanity was close to destroying the planet. He also stated that aliens were not concerned with the everyday happenings on Earth until the development of the atomic bomb. Julius Oppenheimer's 1945 Manhattan Project was the tipping point for humans in the universe. Greer disclosed that there is an electromagnetic pulse that goes out when a bomb of that magnitude goes off. This pulse knocks out electronic devices and electric grids. While most people know about this electromagnetic pulse, Greer stated that a lesser-known scalar pulse is simultaneously released. This scalar pulse is multiples of the speed of light and can disrupt extraterrestrial travel and communications. This is what got their attention many light years away. The increase in sightings of UFOs at nuclear bomb sites is a sign that the alien species are watching humans and are concerned about the risks that nuclear bombs pose to the Earth and other civilizations in the cosmos. Greer further corroborated John Lear's claims that extraterrestrials are concerned about what humans have learned from recoveries and how we might use the information. 
UFO researcher and author of UFOs and Nukes, Robert Hastings, stated that he had interviewed over 160 veterans who have witnessed strange things in the skies above their nuclear sites. There have been objects tracked on radar going at speeds that no object on Earth has been able to achieve. There have also been objects sighted going from one pole to another within minutes, leaving a visible trail of fumes behind. In 2018, a satellite image captured what appeared to be a condensed water trail from an aircraft. This contrail could only have been produced by something traveling at incredibly high speed. The trail ran through the entire length of the Earth from the North to the South Pole. This was problematic as a contrail usually lasted less than 30 minutes, but this one was visible for longer. This opened up a forgotten 1947 report by U.S. Admiral Richard Byrd. Operation High Jump was an expedition to Antarctica where Admiral Byrd stated in his report that a new enemy had been discovered. Operation High Jump is the largest Antarctic expedition to date. It involved 13 ships, 22 aircraft, and 4,700 troops. This enemy, according to Byrd's report, could fly from pole to pole in an instant and posed great danger to the hundreds of men on the expedition. Although this report did not provide specific details about the enemy, Admiral Byrd believed this enemy posed a significant threat. Operation High Jump was said to have been involved in a battle with extraterrestrial crafts that came out from under the ice. A declassified FBI document from 1950 mentions flying saucers measuring around 50 feet around the Los Alamos base, where the atomic laboratories were located. Others have seen strange objects flying over the Nevada desert. In 1967, former Air Force Captain Robert Salas stated that several missiles became inoperative and a security base reported seeing a glowing red object about 30 feet in diameter hovering over the facility. He stated to CNN that the missiles went into an unlaunchable mode, which was worrisome. Experts say that these were moves by the aliens to deactivate nuclear programs on Earth for the safety of the cosmos. In December 1980, air traffic controllers encountered something alarming around the Royal Air Force Base in England. The facility, which houses nuclear weapons in 25 fortified underground bunkers, was about to experience unexplainable sightings. The U.S. Air Force controller reported seeing something unlike anything he had seen before. It had remarkable speed and maneuverability, covering 120 miles in seconds, faster than any missile in existence. They described the UFO as big as a city block, with lights emanating outwards and not obeying any aerodynamic laws. It stopped over the facility for a few seconds and reversed course, speeding away in a swoosh. This was also corroborated by an army colonel who led a patrol to investigate colorful lights seen in the nearby Rendlesham Forest. In recent years, the U.S. Navy has revealed sightings of unidentified aerial phenomena. F-18 pilots from the nuclear-powered USS Theodore Roosevelt carrier saw UFOs almost daily for several months between 2014 and 2015. These crafts were observed during training maneuvers around Virginia and Florida. Officer Ryan Graves stated that some were in a disc shape, others square, while smaller round objects flew together in formation. They all lacked visible engines or exhaust systems. Some tilted mid-flight without any interruption to their trajectories. Graves stated that the UFO almost caused a collision after zipping dangerously between the two planes. Although an aviation flight safety report was filed, this sighting was never investigated. The former Secretary of Defense, Chris Mellon, stated that it was hard to find an explanation as to why a carrier battle group would be shadowed by an unidentified aircraft. He stated that it made an extremely compelling case for the existence of technologies that we didn't think were possible. Other astrophysicists like Leon Golub have stated that these could have been bugs in the radar's code. Golub stated that during the high-speed flight, the imaging and display systems may have been overloaded due to atmospheric effects, reflections, and neurological overload. 
However, these explanations have not stopped the sightings of strange objects in the Earth's atmosphere. These objects include a 40-foot-long tic-tac-shaped object flying over the oceans from the USS Nimitz. While fighter jets were scrambling to approach the object, it accelerated, outrunning the supersonic Navy craft. These sightings have brought to mind the seriousness and threats that the alien spacecrafts would pose. In 2019, the U.S. Navy announced an update to its guidelines that allowed pilots and other personnel to report unexplained aerial phenomena without facing professional stigma and backlash. The U.S. Congress has also taken more interest in being briefed on future sightings of UFOs. The senators received a classified Pentagon briefing on the sightings. These claims have been corroborated by UFO reporter George Knapp, who has conducted extensive research into the existence of UFOs for many years. Knapp claims to have secret files and mountains of evidence of government files that prove the existence and exploitation of alien tech. He agrees that the appearance of aircraft that defy the laws of aerodynamics was a security risk that needed to be studied. In 2019, Former CIA employee and contractor for the National Security Agency, Edward Snowden, embarked on an investigation for CNN on the existence of aliens. Having access to some of the most guarded secrets in the world, Snowden was curious to ask the most pressing questions. He stated that the government is not aware of any intelligent extraterrestrial life. In his memoir, Permanent Record, Snowden stated that as far as we know, Aliens have never contacted Earth. In an interview with Joe Rogan, he stated that there probably are aliens, but we have never come across them. He further stated that the idea that the government is hiding them was ridiculous. With the access that he had to the NSA, CIA, and military network, he was bound to find some evidence of the existence of these aliens, but he found none. He stated that if such evidence did exist, it was well hidden and he considered those sightings conspiracies. Snowden revealed a massive surveillance program run by the U.S. government and is now living in exile in Moscow. Observers believe that if he had seen evidence of aliens and UFOs in Area 51, he would have spoken up about it. While the evidence on the existence and presence of UFOs and aliens is staggering, the government and media continue to declare them a conspiracy. This is why the UFO experts have a saying that for 200 UFO sightings, the Air Force can explain away 201. Thanks for watching another episode of Voyager. While you are still here, make sure to click the video on your screen for more quality content.